Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to revise Combined Science Paper 1 that was written in November 2023. I'm going to use this uh, question paper to provide the final exam tips for June 2024 candidates. Number one is reading which part of a cell contains genetic material. We are going to select A as our answer. Nucleus contains genetic material in the form of multiple linear DNA molecules organized into structures called chromosomes. As you are preparing for your June 2024 combined science paper one on cells, make sure that you understand all about specialized cells, for example, sperm cells, muscle cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and also you can draw and label the, the diagrams on the cells. Be able to name different type of cells, list their functions, and also explain how they are adapted for their functions. Let us now move on to number two. Which factor increases the rate of transpiration? We are going to select C as our answer, which is saying high wind speed. So let me explain why high wind speed increases the rate of transpiration. It is because uh, the water molecules are moved away from the leaf at a faster rate. So that is why it increased the rate of transpiration. So this question is frequently examined. Make sure that you understand the question before attempting to answer it. Um, they can twist the question and ask you which factor decreases the rate of transpiration. So make sure that you understand the questions before attempting to answer it. Let us now move on to number three. Which condition is necessary for seeds to germinate? We are going to select C as our answer, which is saying presence of oxygen. Seeds need oxygen so that they can respire and produce energy for germination and growth. Embryo get energy by breaking down its food stores. So in your preparation for June 2024, make sure that you understand all the conditions that are necessary for seeds to germinate. Uh, this include the presence of oxygen and also seeds require warmth and also water in order to germinate. Let us now move on to number four. Number four is reading. The diagram shows the internal structure of a leaf. What part is P? So P is known as epidermis. Again, a question on internal structure of a leaf is a frequently examined question. You should be able to understand where we are going to see the palisade. Palisade is going to be in this region. So we also see the chloroplast within the palisade cells. And then the gut cell is going to be located here. So the role of the gut cell is to control the opening and closing of the stomata. Let us now move on to number five. Number five is reading. Chewing is important for, we are going to select D as our answer which is saying increasing the surface area of the food. So chewing is important for increasing the surface area of the food. It makes food small enough to feed down the oesophagus. On that matter, as you are preparing for June 2024, make sure that you understand uh, the different types of teeth and their function. Uh, make sure that you understand the type of tooth that are used for chewing and for tearing. And also the position is uh, also important. You should know where you are going to locate the premolars, where you are going to locate the molars, 
the canines and the incisor. Let us now move on to number five. So number six. Number six is reading. Typhoid is caused by, we are going to select C as our answer, which is saying bacteria. So typhoid is caused by the bacteria that is known as salmonella typhoid. It is usually sprayed through contaminated food and water. So in your preparation for June 2024 exam, make sure that you understand uh, some of the diseases that are caused by fungi, viruses, and protozoa. Let us now move on to number seven. The diagram shows a part of the nitrogen cycle, which R, A, B, C, or D represent the first step in nitrification. So we are going to select uh, C as our answer. This is where we are going to have the first step in nitrification. So nitrogen cycle is a frequently examined question. You can be asked about nitrogen cycle in your June 2024. So make sure that you understand uh, the denitrification, where we are going to see the decomposition, where we are going to see nitrogen fixation, etc. So I'm going to label here. So the conversion from nitrates to nitrogen in the atmosphere is known as denitrification. And then I want to explain part B. We are having nitrogen in the atmosphere. First, the process that is going to okay is nitrogen fixation, where we are going to have uh, atmospheric nitrogen uh, being uh, in the plant protein. And then after that, we convert from plant protein to ammonium compounds, and the process is going to be known as ammonification. So two processes okay, that is nitrogen fixation, and ammonification. And then the conversion of ammonium compounds in the soil to nitrates is known as nitrification. And then the conversion of nitrates to nitrates is also nitrification. This is the second step of nitrification. So make sure that you understand nitrogen cycle in your preparation and also you understand about carbon cycle. Let us now move on to number eight. It is reading which blood vessel transport oxygenated blood to all parts of the body. We are going to select iota as our answer, which is A. So iota transport oxygenated blood to all parts of the body. It is very important also to know the functions of other blood vessels that are given. The role of vena cava is to transport deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body to the heart. And then the next blood vessel is pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery transports deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. And then finally, pulmonary artery transports oxygen... Uh, Pulmonary vein transport oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. So make sure that you are perfect when it comes to circulatory system. You understand all the different types of blood vessels. You can compare their structures, the differences between veins and arteries. And also should understand which uh, blood vessels he has valves and those um, which carry blood under high pressure, which is a wall with more elastic fibers, the one which is wider lumen. They can twist such kind of questions on your exams in June 2024. Let us now move on to number nine. Which type of immunity is acquired by infants through breastfeeding? We are going to select D as our answer, which is saying natural passive. So breastfeeding is natural passive. Infants receive mothers and bodies through the breast milk. So you should understand 
everything about artificial active, artificial passive, natural active, etc. Let us move on to number 10. Number 10 is reading, the diagram shows the female reproductive system. Where is the intrauterine device inserted in order to prevent pregnancy? We are going to select B as our answer. The intrauterine device is inserted in the uterus or the womb to prevent pregnancy. It is a long-term reversible and one of the effective birth control methods. So in your preparation for June 2024 exams, uh, make sure that you understand everything about uh, the contraception, the contraceptive methods, you, you understand the chemical methods and also the physical method of controlling pregnancy. Let us now move on to number 11. Number 11 is reading, which gas changes bicarbonate indicator from red to yellow? We are going to select D as our answer. Bicarbonate indicator is red when carbon dioxide levels are at normal air levels. However, an increase in carbon dioxide changes the indicator to yellow and decrease in carbon dioxide change it to paper. Let us now move on to number 12. It is reading which one is the end product of starch digestion? We are going to select glucose as our answer. So make sure that you understand all the products of digestion. What we are going to obtain when we break down proteins, we get amino acids. When we break down lipids or fats, we are going to have glycerol and fat acids. So make sure that you understand everything about digestion and also the enzymes that are used to convert from starch to glucose. We use amylase to convert um, lipids to glycerol and fat acids. We use um, lipase enzyme and then to convert proteins to amino acids, we use enzymes such as trypsin and pepsin. Let us now proceed to number 13. Number 13 is reading, which process is responsible for the movement of gases in and out of the alveoli? We are going to select diffusion as our answer, which is B. So diffusion is responsible for the movement of gases in and out of alveolus, gaseous exchange occurs primarily through diffusion. So you should understand how to define osmosis, you should understand the process of respiration and also the process of active uptake in your preparation for June 2024 exams. Let us now move on to number 14. The diagram shows a visking tube with solution J placed in a beaker containing solution K, which row correctly identifies solutions J and K. So this is at the beginning of the experiment and this is at the end of experiment. We are going to select D as our answer on number 14. So this is what has happened. J is salt solution and K is distilled water. Water moves from solution K by osmosis, causing this TGD to okay. Can you see the differences here? This, are, this one is now more TGD because it was placed in solution K, which is distilled water. So we are going to select D as our answer on number 14. And then number 15, the nuclear notation for an oxygen atom is 16HO. We are supposed to write the electronic configuration for the atom. Uh, so this um, nuclear notation is indicating that oxygen it is containing eight protons and also eight electrons. So in the first shell, we are going to have two electrons, and then in order to get a total of eight 
we are going to say 8 minus 2 in, in order to get 6. So it implies that electronic configuration of the atom is going to be B. So in your preparation for your combined science paper 1, make sure that you understand how to write electronic configuration of all the atoms from element 1 to element 20 in the periodic table. Number 16, the number of particles in one more of N substance is known as Avogadro number, which is A. So the definition of Avogadro number is number of particles present in one more of N substance. Let us move on to number 17. Which statement describe an ionic compound? We are going to select A as our answer which is saying it conducts electricity when in molten state. So make sure that as you are preparing for your June 2024, uh, you understand all the properties of ionic compounds and also you understand the properties of covalent compounds. Let us now move on to number 18. Number 18 is reading, the diagram shows a chromatogram obtained by separating dyes X, Y, Z, and W. Which two dyes have the same number of inks? So here we are going to select B as our answer, which is saying X and Z. So the reason why we are saying X and Z is that uh, we are not going to consider this first line. We are going to consider these um, lines. So above X, we are having two inks. And then above Z, we are considering these two inks. Don't consider this as an ink. It was just a, just, just a mess that okay is, but when you check on the original document, there is no this ink. So X and Z are the ones that are having the same number of inks. We are considering this one, two, and here one, two. Let us now move on to number 19. Number 19, which one is a property of group two elements? We are going to select C as our answer. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. We are going to select D as our answer, which is reading the react with water forming alkaline solutions. So make sure that you understand the properties of group one elements, the properties of group two elements, properties of group seven elements, and also the properties of uh, group eight or group zero elements. And then let us now move on to number 20. Number 20 is reading, the diagram shows a pH scale which position A, B, C, or D represent the pH of water? We are going to select B as our answer. Water is a pH which is neutral, and the neutral pH is found at the 7. And then A, it is described as strong acidic. And then C, from pH 8 to pH 10, it is described as slightly basic or um, weak basic and then pH 14 is described as strong basic so make sure that you understand everything about pH scale you can uh, understand everything about the use of litmus paper and the use of universal indicator in order to show the different uh, pH of the solutions let us now move on to number 21. Uh, the equation shows a chemical reaction. We are having sodium hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid in order to get uh, sodium sulfate and water. So we are supposed to, the equation represents, um, we are going to select D as our answer, which is a neutralization reaction. So whenever you react an acid in a base, it is known as neutralization reaction because you are going to form water and salt. So this is our base and this is our acid in order to form sodium sulfate, which is salt and water. 
So let us now move on to number 22. Which condition is required for the production of ammonia? So we are going to select C as our answer, which is the temperature of 415 degrees Celsius. So make sure that you understand the conditions that are required for harbor process, the conditions that are required for the contact process, and also we understand other industrial processes such as the saponification, that is product, production of soap, uh, the production of peanut butter, and also the electrolysis and electroplating. Number 23, the diagram shows the electrolysis of molten lead to bromide. Which observation is made in electrode A? So we are going to select D as our answer, which is bulbs of gas are seen. I'm going to explain this answer. During electrolysis of lead bromide, dark reddish brown fumes of bromine, they're going to evolve at the anode due to the migration of bromide to the anode. The bubble of gas are seen, there is bubbling at the anode as brown bromine gas is given off. So that is the reason why we are going to observe the bubbles of gas on electrode A. So you should understand how to label uh, a simple electrolysis diagram. This is going to be the anode. Why? Because it is connected to the positive terminal. And then this is a cathode as it is connected to the negative terminal. So when we are having lead to bromide, it is like we are having this lead, which is um, lead ions, and also we are having bromide ions. So the bromide ions, they are going to be attracted to the positive terminal. That is why we are having the bubbles of gas seen on the anode. Let us now move on to number 24. Alloying is used for, we are going to select A as our answer, which is saying improving metals properties. So alloying is done for main reasons, typically to increase strength, corrosion resistance. So we can say it is done to create a new metal with superior properties. That is why we are selecting A as our answer. We can't select B because we don't want to make it more reactive. Uh, that is why we do the alloying in order to have a metal that is corrosion resistant. And we can select C as our answer, which is saying making metal less toxic. We can't select uh, D as our answer, which is saying purifying metal. So our answer is going to be A. Let us now move on to number 25. Which one is byproduct in the manufacture of soap? We are going to select C as our answer, which is glass row. So you should understand that uh, in the production of soap, what we do is we are going to react an ester and base in order to have soap and glass row. So the main product is soap, that is why we are doing saponification. And then the other product that is going to be a byproduct is going to be glass row. And then number 26, which equation A, B, C, or D shows a reaction that occurs in the blast furnace? So the reason for blast furnace is for us to have a pure ion. So we can select iron oxide, iron oxide is our answer. So it means that A and B, they are disqualified. So here we are having iron plus magnesium oxide and also iron plus carbon dioxide. C is disqualified because we don't use magnesium in the production of uh, iron. We use carbon monoxide. So the correct option is D. If we say iron oxide plus carbon monoxide, we are going to have iron plus carbon dioxide. So regarding this question, uh, you can be asked to write um, the balanced equation that okay in the blast finish 
and they will say you're supposed to write using the chemical symbol. So to write iron oxide, we are going to say iron oxide plus carbon monoxide in order to give us iron plus carbon dioxide. And then we should make sure that the equation is balanced. Here we are having two ions, so we need to put a two here. And then on oxygen side, here we are having four oxygens. And here we are having two oxygen. We are having one carbon, one carbon. So we need to have a balanced equation. Here we are going to write three, so that we now have six oxygen. And here we need another three, so that if we say three times two, we obtain six oxygens. And then the number of carbons, here we are having three carbons, here three carbons. So it implies that our equation is now a balanced equation. So make sure that you understand all the equations that are involved in the blast furnace, the equations that are involved in the conduct process, the equations that are involved in harbor process. Number 27, the diagram shows structural formula of organic compounds which one is structural formula of ethanol so usually on number 27 they are going to ask you a question on organic chemistry so make sure that you understand everything about drawing displayed formulas you can understand how to come up with empirical formulas of organic compounds so in this case, um, the one that we are going to take is our ethanol, is this B. Because you should understand that ethanol, uh, the molecular formula of ethanol is C2H5OH. This implies that we are having two carbons that are connected to five hydrogens, and also uh, this is going to be the homologous series of alcohols, all the alcohols, they have this OH. So this is how we come up with ethanol. So the first one is known as methanol. The third one is known as uh, propanol. And then this one is known as butanol because it has got four carbons, three carbons, propanol, two carbons, ethanol, one carbon methanol so that is what you should understand when it comes to organic chemistry let us now move on to the physics section number 28 is reading the back graph shows the variation in mass of seeds what is the total number of seeds used so we are going to say five here we are having five plus this 15 plus this five plus this 15. So if we say 5 plus 15, we get 20. 20 plus 5, 25. 25 plus 15, we are going to get 40. So it implies that on number 28, our answer is going to be C. Let us now move on to number 29. Heat moves in solids through. The correct option is conduction. So make sure that you understand uh, this process of radiation convection and conduction when it comes to heat transfer methods. Heat can be transferred in three ways by conduction, convection and radiation. Conduction is the transfer of heat from one molecule to another by direct conduct. Convection is movement of heat by a fluid such as water or air. And then radiation is transfer of heat by electromagnetic waves. Let us now move on to number 30. Number 30 is reading, a bulb lights up when it is connected to a battery. We are supposed to write the NH conversion, so we are going to select B as our answer because the NH that is stored in battery is known as chemical NH. So we are going to convert from chemical for us to have electrical NH and then for us to have the uh, bulb lighting up, it is going to be heat and light energy. So the correct answer is B on number 30.
Number eight one, which one is a function of carburetor? We are going to select C as our answer. Carburetors are responsible for mixing air with fuel to obtain the correct ratio of combustible vehicles engine. Number 32, the diagram shows a simple machine. What is the velocity ratio of the machine? So when we are calculating velocity ratio of a pulley, we are just supposed to count the number of pulleys that we are observing on the diagram. In this case, we are just observing one pulley, this pulley. So we are going to write our velocity ratio is one, which is B. And then number 33, uh, the force that is experienced between a brake shoe and a wheel is, we are going to select friction as our answer, which is B. Friction is rubbing of one board against another. Let us move on to number 34. Number 34 is reading. The diagram shows forces acting on a lever. The lever is balanced. We are supposed to calculate uh, the force F. This is the force F that we want to calculate. So we are going to apply the principle of moment. Uh, the principle of moment says that anti-clockwise is equals to clockwise moment. So on our clockwise, we are having 200 newtons and the distance of 4 meters. So we say 200 newtons times 4 meters is equals to... Here we want to calculate our force, which is F, and the distance is 8 meters. This is the 8 meters. So we want to make F the subject of formula. We are going to divide both sides by 8 meters. So this M is going to cancel this M. We say 4 into 4, 1. 4 into 8, we get 2. And then 2 into 200, we are going to have 100 newtons. So it implies that force is equal to 100 newtons, which is A. And then number 35, the diagram shows a container with water. At which point A, B, C, or D is the pressure, the least? We are going to select A as our answer. Pressure is least at the top and it is highest at the bottom. Let us now move on to number 36. Number 36, which one is a magnetic material? We are going to select iron as our answer, which is A. So iron is magnetic material because it is attracted by magnet. Um, other magnetic materials also include nickel and cobalt. Let us now move on to number 37. Number 37 is reading which electric symbol A, B, C, or D represents an ammeter. We are going to select C as our answer. This is for ammeter. This is for voltmeter where we are going to have a V inside the circle and this one is a um, resistor. And then this one is an um, open switch. So make sure that you understand all the symbols that are used in electricity. And then on number 38, it is reading the diagram shows an open three pin plug. Part P is the dash. So our part pin, we are going to select B as our answer. It is a live wire because a live wire is the one that is connected to the fuse. So this is the fuse, this is the live wire, and then this is a this is the live wire, the fuse, the neutral wire, and also the earth wire. You're supposed to be able to know the colors that are used uh, by those wires. So the live wire, it is going to be brown. And then the neutral wire is blue. The earth wire is yellow or green. So that is what you should understand when it comes to 
three pin plug. Let us now move on to number 39. Number 39, the diagram shows part of an alternating current generator. What must be connected to B? We are going to select slip rings as our answer. So on this part B, we are going to have slip rings. Their function is to transmit electric power to coil to make it rotate. And then finally, number four, which one is a media for the signal transmission? We are going to select optic fiber is our answer. Optic fiber is transmission medium to carry signal over long distance at a high speed. So this marks the end of our tutorial today on um, November 2023 Combined Science Paper 1, which I've used as uh, final exam tips guidance. Thank you so much guys for following me on this channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and share my videos. I love you all. This is Eve signing out.